welcome back to explore electronics i hope all are doing well so today we are going to start with module 3 again it is divided into two chapters first chapter is arrays and strings and second chapter is pointers in first chapter we are going to see about the types of arrays and how we generate a pointer to an array and passing single dimensional array to our functions and we will also learn how string is related to an array and in second chapter it's all about the fundamentals of a pointers and advanced topic of the pointers will be discussed in the upcoming modules and the textbook one it is prescribed one and so that is see the complete reference that is chapter 4 and 5 so in today's concepts in today's video we are going to cover this many topics the first one is single dimensional arrays generating a pointer to an array passing single dimension and arrays to functions so before we start make sure you have your notebooks and pen ready note down the key points as we go along this notes will really help you during your exams and serve as a quick revision key note later now let us move on the first thing is what is array array is nothing but it's a collection of variables of same type that are referred to through a common name or in simple way we can tell us it's a collection of homogeneous elements it should contain a common thing among all the elements that is we call it as array a specific element in an array is accessed by an index in c all arrays consist of continuous memory locations continuous is nothing but like continuous memory locations or in kannada we can say akka pakka the same we have considered like before we understand here you have to understand that what is the difference between index and address here index is nothing but it is a position or a number within a data structure or an array like it is used to specific or identify an element like here it is index is used to understand the specific position of an element in an array but address when it comes to address it is a actual like physical memory location or uh, where that element is stored so that is called as address and index is like only a position of an element in a particular array but address is a actual physical memory okay here the lowest address corresponds to the first element and the highest address to the last element suppose let me consider here this is an array and here the first element will be having a lower address lowest address and the last element will be having highest address and it have many several dimension as i mentioned it has many types single dimension double dimension or two dimension or multi dimensional array the most common array is the string which is simply an array of characters terminated by null null we will represented as this next concept is single dimensional array single dimensional array or we can call it as 1d 1d array here it is a syntax of single dimensional array like please note down this in further again we will study two dimensional array again you will get uh, like syntax and how we are going to measure the size of an array formula and same way here also so make sure you note down this point the first one is type variable name and size here size it plays the type like basic data type it must be like maybe int float double or anything that is type variable name is nothing but any name you can assign it like balance whatever it comes to your mind you can size is nothing but how many elements it can hold in a particular array for example here double is an int balance is a variable name and size here is taken as 100 means balance array can hold up to 100 elements in c89 version the size of an array must be specified using a constant expression 
in all C89, the size of an array is fixed as compile time, but in C99, it is determined at runtime. Here you can see how we can access and assign a value to an array. Here, let me consider an array. As I mentioned, like specific position of an element in an array, always the index starts with 0. Okay, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Index, I have given a value. And let me consider here, based on this example, at third position, that is third index, the value is 12.23. 12.23. And something, any values, you can take any values. Let me consider at this many values. Now, see, here I have access, like this is an array I have declared initially. Now, I want to access an element that is at third index. So, you can do that by using this expression. Exit. In the same way, you can assign a value to a particular index by mentioning the same way, like that what we have mentioned assigned element number 3 in balance the value is 12.23 by using assignment operator you can assign a value to the array means an element in c all arrays have zero as the index of their first element therefore when you write char p of 10 then it is considered as 0 to 9 as i mentioned Always the index starts with 0. If you consider it as 10, then it should start with 0 and end with 9. Total count is 10. It's only a count, but when it comes to an indexing part, 0 to 9. Here is an example like how we want to declare an array and now we are going to print that. The same lines and here in data type x is a variable name and 100 is the size of an array. Here this declares a 100 integer array and int t here by using for loop. In the already in the previous model we have discussed how we want to declare a for loop. Like the first will be an initialization and the second the next part will be condition and then incrementation. In the same way I have mentioned, here first I will load, then later by using a for loop and printf statement, I will display the values of x. This is a program example for declaration of array. Here, uh, as I said, like int, the size, the storage is 2. If I consider char, then 1. Hence, we can say that the storage, the amount of storage required to hold an array directly depends on two parameters. The first parameter is type and the second parameter is size. So, it mainly depends on these two parameters. Here is a formula. It is particularly for this single dimensional array. Again, when we study two dimensional array, again we will get a formula. So, make sure you note this point. Total bytes is equal to size of basic type and multiplied by length of an array. Here, it see as no bounds checking on arrays. Like you could overwrite either end of an array or write into some other variables data or even in the programmer's code. Here is an example. Here this code will compile without error, but it is incorrect because here I have mentioned count 10, but I have mentioned less than 100. So this causes count to be overrun. Here char a of 7. Like I said the definition of address, right? Address is a actual physical memory location where the exact element is stored that is called address here you can see the memory actual memory location that is thousand thousand and one two three and this is an index zero one two three these are zeros 
element here it is an a7 element character array beginning at location 1000 here next thing is generating a pointer to an array how we are going to generate a pointer to an array firstly uh, note down this this specifies value sorry okay value and this sam percent specifies address if you understand these two basic concepts then the pointers and array concept will be easily understandable okay here you can generate a pointer to the first element of an array by simply specifying the array name without any index here for example int sample 10 here in have initialized the pointer first then int sample 10 here p is equal to sample here first element by using the name sample here assigns p the address of the first element of sample is p means indirectly assigning value here you can assign value in two ways either you can simply just mention it as sample or ampersand sample both produces the same result but almost we will use professionally never seen this type of code means we will make it the code in a simpler way passing single dimensional array to a function the next concept here you cannot pass an entire array as an argument to a function however pass a pointer to an array by specifying the array's name without an index here is an example so i want to pass here i want to pass i to the function one okay here it can be done in three ways that is as a pointer as a sized array and as an unsized array now let us see one by one here for example to receive i a function called function one can be declared as by using a pointer here i have used pointer symbol and x this is one method and the second one is by using a size survey. Here I have mentioned the size of an array, right? Data type, variable name, and the size of an array. Here unsized array. Uh, unsized array also can be done. Here see have did not mention any size. See, all three declaration methods produce similar results because each tells the compiler that an integer pointer is going to be received the first declaration actually uses pointers and this one standard array declaration and here declaration specifies that an array of type int of some length is to be received based on input it declares its own size here as you can see the length of an array does not matter as far as the function is concerned because c performs no bounds checking for this in the previous slides only examples gave in fact as far as the compiler is concerned it also works because the compiler generates codes that instructs function one to receive a pointer it does not actually create a 32 element array Okay, here is an example, programming example, like simple code, wide function one int x of 32. I hope you understood the concepts, the part one video. Uh, if you like this video, please like and subscribe to Explore Electronics YouTube channel and share with your friends too. And stay tuned for upcoming videos. Keep coding. Keep learning and you will be seeing in next videos. Bye-bye.